All right, it's been quite some time since I put a video together, so I figured I'd make one today out here. As you can see, I got the uh, bath pans out. I got the old birds kind of free lofting. Uh, the stock birds are taking a bath right here. There's a few birds up in the air. I don't know if you can see them there. Kind of high up there. Everybody's getting a nice bath today. So we'll go on over to the breeding loft then we'll take a look at the birds that I still have paired together. Just cleaned the loft, it's already getting dirty. You'll notice there's not many birds in here. I have two pairs that are still together. And I got my last pair over there that I I'm going to be splitting up today. Two youngsters from them on that side. Um, a couple of the cocks, the breeding cocks. One youngster here. A uh, youngster right here that I took out of the nest this morning. So I figured I'd make this video as an update because I haven't been on here in a while. Show you what's going on with the birds, uh, how the breeding season went for me. And we'll take a closer look at some of these birds. I got some pedigrees out here. We'll show you those as well. So for the most of you that know, I've seen my last videos. My goal this year was to breed a small amount of birds and whatever birds I bred, I was gonna send them out to the one loft races. So that's exactly what I did. I bred uh, probably 11, yeah, I got 11 birds out right now. Um, I do have a couple extra, like this one here, we'll get into that in a minute. So I got birds down in Texas at the Cuevas Classic. I got birds down in Florida at the Florida Pigeon Derby and I have birds down at the Peach Classic in Georgia. So my goal, like I mentioned, was quality over quantity this year. I don't care how many birds I bred, just everything I bred was of decent quality, which we'll get to in a minute with these uh, birds that I purchased a few months back. Overall, the breeding season wasn't the best but it wasn't the worst. I had a couple of rounds that weren't fertile. Uh, the old red jet cock on that side, his first round wasn't fertile. I had to trim him up a little bit. You notice his tail is chopped, trimmed around his vent, trimmed his tail. Every other round uh, was perfect. Got two youngsters, three rounds. Um, a couple of the other birds I had were a little young. You know, they're 2022, 20, so it was their first year breeding. Uh, this this cock right here it was his first year breeding as well. He's a 20, I think. A, yeah, I think he's a 2020, but it was, he's never been bred. He was just for stock. So this is his first year. Got a couple of youngsters out of him, which are excellent quality. Um, this one right here is out of him as well. Hopefully it molts out nice. But I'm not too uh, disappointed with the breeding. I got all the birds that I wanted to get out to the, to the uh, one-loff races and uh, these few extras. Uh, they're either going to be kept for stock or I might consider putting them up for auction later this year. So let's move on over to uh, these birds. What I'll do is I'll take the birds individually. I'll put them in the box over here. Little uh, picture box is set up on the other section and we'll uh, take a look at them. Take a look at the pedigrees. All right, so the first bird I'll give you a look at, this hen right here. I picked this up on uh, iPigeon from... Uh, Champ Camp Chicago. So she was actually um, the daughter of Equal First in the 2021 Hoosier and the daughter of the first ace, which was uh, 16th place in the final at Hoosier in 2021. That's her father right there. So th he took these birds, the, the Equal First and the uh, first ace, made them together. Made this hen. Um, here's just a little look at the father, Silver Jansen, Blue Boar Jansen, Steph Van Reet. Oh, here's the mother. So I saw this bird and I figured she'd probably go good with some of my uh, Red Fox Jansen stuff. So I figured, you know, might as well try to uh, grab her. So I did. So that's the uh, that's the pedigree for her. Let's take a look, I got her in the box. She's a little nervous. Set this box up just to take pictures. Put some LED lights in here so you can get a good look at the birds. She's very nice. 
Nice red feet. Very nice calm hen. She bred me three rounds. They were all red checks. I'll show you the cock in one second, but she's pretty nice. She's a 2022. Hopefully uh, they do well. The young kids from her. Pretty happy with the quality of her. She's starting to go through a little bit of a face molt. If you notice. So there she is. That is, uh, let me see. 54124. 2022 ARPU. Now I made it her on uh, this this red check cock right here. He's pretty old. He's a uh, 2010, I believe, but he's uh, Red Fox Jansen. So, like I said before, I trimmed him up, so he's a little rough right now. But he definitely uh, fertilized three nice rounds for me. So I'll grab the youngsters that I have from him and uh, we'll take a look at those. All right, so here's the last round of the uh, youngsters out of that pair I just showed you. The blue bar hand made to the red check cock. They're real nice. The other two rounds came out almost identical to these. They're down in uh, Florida and there's two more in Georgia. But these, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet. This one, you'll notice a little lighter than this one, but real nice, real nice youngsters. All right, so the next bird we're gonna look at right here, this is uh, another one I purchased off iPigeon. This bird was bred by Tim Lucas of uh, Champ Camp Racing Loft. So this is um, Champ A45. Uh, he's a 2020, like I mentioned earlier. And his, uh, his father is Kryptonite. Kryptonite's a son of Wolverine, as well as the son of Mike has a very good one. And on his mother's side, his mother is a full sister to Red Monkey. And his mother's father is Weston, son of Aviator. His, uh, his mother's mother, which is his grandmother, is a daughter of Wolverine when mated to Abigail, also Mother's a red monkey. So this is um, basically a bird that I purchased to mate with the other hen that I bought, the granddaughter Wolverine. And they did produce some really nice young ones for me. So I'll take a look at uh, the other youngster that he that I still have that I didn't send out to the, to the one-off races. We'll, we'll grab him in just a minute. So let's take a look at this guy. He's a little uh, shabby because he's going through a molt right now. But he's, he's real nice, real nice bird. Real nice eye on this bird for all you eye sign guys. Nice white waddle. Like I said, he's going through a molt, so I don't mind his, uh, his bar there. It's kind of messed up. But I'm real happy with this guy. He bred me a couple nice birds. Hopefully they do some damage out in those one off races that I sent them to. Let's see if I get him to turn around. Come on. Yeah, he's a little crazy. But there he is, Champ 845. Wolverine bloodline. Mother's a full sister to Red Monkey. First place, Victoria Falls. Okay, so this next bird here is uh, directly from Mike Gannis. If you've seen my last video, it was a video of this bird when I had first got him in the mail. So this is a um, half-brother to Thomas Six. For those of you that know Thomas Six, one of the uh, super pigeons right now. Very uh, sought after bloodline of birds. So this bird is a GFL 980. He's a 2022. Uh, his father is the king. Same father as Thomas Six. First place, Golden Al Garvey by 24 minutes. The mother is uh, Storm Cloud. Full sister, Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine was a first place Victoria Falls final race winner. So you can see here, the father's of the king is Joseph, mother's crystal diamond, and then you got this side. Regular Gannis pedigree. 
This bird is very nice. I uh, purchased this bird during the Eye Pigeon Gala auction in Las Vegas. Uh, the reason that I did is because I happen to have a another Thomas Six Bloodline bird that I wanted to mate with uh, this guy. And I wanted to keep the bloodline kind of the same. So let's take a look at him. There he is. GFL 980, directly from Mike Gannis. He's a little rough too. Everybody's starting to go through that first molt phase. Real nice pigeon, stands up nice and tall. I bred two nice youngsters at him. Now, mind you, I got him late, so by the time that I got him in the breeding loft and got him situated, it took a while for him to get acclimated with the hen. And So I have one youngster out of him right now that I still have, and the other one is down in Florida, I believe. But there he is, GFL 980, real nice pigeon, very happy with him. Hopefully next year he'll uh, he'll be putting out a lot more youngsters. This next pigeon is another pigeon I purchased from uh, Shane Sims out at uh, Champ Camp Chicago. A uh, nice little hen. Uh, this is a uh, 54149 blue check. She's still pretty young. When I bought her, she was too young to really even breed. I ended up getting youngsters out of her late. Like I mentioned before, I got one that I still have here and the other one's down in Florida. Uh, made it to that Thomas Six bird, the, uh, the blue bar the GFL 980. So the mother to this bird is uh, another Gannis bird, GFL 76. Uh, I'm sorry, the father, this is the father to her. And it's a son of Thomas Six. When mated to Mike has a very good one. On her mother's side, um, her mother is a, is out of uh, Silt Orpheus, uh, second place 2012 South African Million Dollar Race and Mix which is another well-known pigeon. First place, 2018 South African Million Dollar Race. So a lot of uh, South African Million Dollar blood in this um, in this bird. She's very small. I was a little, uh, little hesitant about her first when I first got her, but she did breed two nice youngsters off of the bird I paired her with. There's a little bit of Wolverine in there as well, as you can see. So let's take a look at her. There she is. Nice little hen. She looks just like her uh, grandmother Mix, actually. If you know, if you're familiar with Mix, uh, she kind of looks like her to me. But she's very small. Nice little blue check. See how she looks when she molts out. So there she is. That is. Five four one four nine, ARPU twenty twenty two. So that's the Thomas Six bloodline that I got going on here. <laughs> so this bird was one of the first birds that I purchased from uh, Shane in uh, Chicago, Champ Camp Chicago. Uh, this is a five four one two seven. This is a very nice. Blue bar hen. This bird really caught my eye uh, when I got her out of the box. I really, really liked her. She's very nice. She bred the, a couple nice youngsters. Again, this is the hen that I mated. Um, the the bird that I showed you, uh, eight four five Champ Camp from Tim Lucas. So the father side is uh, GFL one six eight. It's Marple Wolverine. They call it. Um, the father is Marple. First place Victoria Falls. And the mother is Simone, daughter of Wolverine. So we got a lot of inbred Wolverine stuff going on in this pedigree. On the mother's side, you got uh, GFL 18, 2016. The, um, the father to her mother is Wolverine, which makes her a granddaughter of Wolverine. Um, then the father, the grandfather is a daughter of Rocket and Mona Lisa. So you could see you got some Rocket, some Mona Lisa in there, classic Anis stuff. Uh, Wolverine one more time up here on the uh, father side. So she's real nice. I really like her. She looks great. Hopefully these youngsters do something for me down there in uh, Georgia and out there in Texas as well. So let's have a look at her. There she is. 
very, very nice hen. This is uh, 5'4", 127. Very nice hen. Nice white flight. So here's the youngster out of the Wolverine pair, uh, 845 and 54127. This is um, Vita King 7634. He's a 2023. Real nice youngster. Hopefully he molts out nice. Actually, it might even be a hen. Very nice bird though. This guy, I just pulled out of the nest today. This one's gonna be really nice. This is out of the Thomas Six birds I just showed you. The one directly from my Gannis, GFL 980, as well as that small blue check hen I just showed you. That was uh, 54149. So, a little, little tick eye. I think he's got a white flat on the other side. 7635, Vita King, 2023. Very nice young bird. So I also had two other pairs of birds I bred in there. I moved them over to the flying loft. Um, the youngsters are down in Florida and the other ones down in Texas. If you remember the pair of Barcelona grizzles, those two are down in Florida and the indigo uh, white flight cock made it on his daughter, which was the opal. There's one of those down in Georgia and the other one I sent to a fraternity race up north. So I'll include a couple pictures of the youngsters out of them, but right now they're in the flying loft and uh, they should be pretty nice. Hopefully they, uh, they do some damage down there at the races as well. And we'll see what happens. That's pretty much gonna sum up this video. I'm trying to keep them short and sweet. Um, I will post some more in the near future, but for right now, that's gonna be it. Right now, I'm gonna focus on moving all the stock birds from the uh, flying loft back into the breeding loft. Um, I do still have this hen has eggs. That's uh, 54127 out of the Wolverine pair. I'm probably just gonna let them hatch and then I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Uh, I might throw them on eye pigeon or uh, either keep them for stock, depending on what I uh, decide to do. And the Thomas Six pair does have a uh, set of eggs underneath the, uh, the feed barrel that I just discovered last week. So I'm probably just gonna let them raise those. Um, if you are interested in uh, some of these youngsters that I have here, whether it be the two reds I showed you, um, the Thomas Six bird or the Wolverine young bird, uh, let me know down in the comments. I might consider getting rid of them. Maybe we could work something out. Uh, if not, you might see them up on iPigeon in October, um, unless I decide otherwise, like I said, to keep them for stock. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. I will keep everybody updated on how the birds do down in uh, the races that they're out in the one loft races. If you want to check me out on Wind Companion, EB Loft, they'll show you uh, the birds every week in training and uh, whatever. The races, I believe, are going to start around October, September. So, all right, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. And any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments as usual. And that's going to sum it up.